You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Myopia Defender Childhood is a podcast, obviously, where we generally watch a action movie that is about at least 10 years old. Someone on the panel probably grew up with it, and it's a way to kind of reassess the movies that were a big deal when we were younger that we loved. However, one of the sideshows that I had been working on with a regular panelist, Zach, was something we called Zaction Films, where we watched a shitty, often, action movie. And this is one of those. We decided not to put it in the main feed for a lot of reasons, but you get to hear it here. Enjoy. Also, this is Patreon, so no ad. Thanks. Okay, I'm Zach Krause. Um, Apparently, I'm the host of Zaction. Wait, I'm going to stop you there. This podcast is named for you. And I didn't know su- I was the host. <laughs> it was like five seconds ago. Speaking to the microphone. Oh, yeah. So I didn't even know I was the host until apparently five seconds ago. Yeah, well, that's about how we usually do things. <laughs> so what is this podcast supposed to be, Zach? So this is a action-oriented podcast um, where we watch, try and watch crazy action films and make ludicrous commentary about it. So uh, this week, as you guys heard at the top... Um, Atlas has fallen. We chose Atlas has fallen at random. Uh, well, random. We didn't like have a shuffle. We just went through Netflix and found a movie that looked more interesting than it turned out to be. It was truly horrible. All right. So, um, Zach, tell us what we do here. Yeah, we're basically going to make uh, talk about a movie, make fun of it, um, and maybe make a recommendation on whether we think anybody should ever see this. Ever. 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 Yeah. All right. So, um, what's next? What do we do? Let's talk about the plot. Uh, do you want me to do it? Um, sure. You can go ahead. All right. So, we, as you can tell, we've really planned this out. My, I didn't even. For those of you who listen to Myopia or Mission Briefing, I usually go in with like a moleskin or something, or field notes, and like a pen. And I, no, this time we barely could pay attention. Um, this, if you heard the Commando episode, that's going to become important. You know, listen to Commando. Um, it's in the feed. It, it's worth it. But so. <sighs> I never saw the first one. Uh, you, you didn't even know there was this was a sequel. I, I didn't even know this was a sequel until Nick pointed it out at the end, and uh, I was shocked they made a second one because I'm pretty sure the first one must have been really, really bad. Well, I mean, uh, uh, like you said, the best part of it was Aaron Eckhart. Uh, this movie is a battle between... <laughs> this is a battle between... Uh, I almost said Gerald Ford. What the f*** is the actor's name? Uh, it was the Gerald. guy from 300, but I don't remember. I don't Gerard know Butler. Yeah, it was a battle was. between Gerard Butler and his own Scottish accent. Like, this thing was a shame. Um, trying to be American. It's cute. Uh, anyway, uh, and Aaron Eckhart, who was the president, I think he was the best part of it, frankly. He um, was amazing in this movie. Um, but anyway, uh, so the plot of this is the Prime Minister of Britain is uh, has a heart attack and we're told to be suspicious immediately because we read the trailer. Um, it said the president dies, or the prime minister dies under suspicious circumstances. So Zach and I were immediately suspicious. Um, but they decide to have a massive funeral, which I imagine they would do. Um, but you know, they're only given blah 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 two days to plan a funeral because this has never happened before. No one's ever died ever. And then it turns out the terrorists have taken over the entire city. This is kind of the problem with these movies in general. Like, we'll get to it. This is this is Zach's podcast, not Nick pontificating. So I guess we'll see how this goes. But I don't know. This this was the hardest part for me because literally, it's like we can't trust anyone. I am an American speaking in an American accent. Um, but bullshit goes down, man. Like, they blow up a bridge where the Japanese prime minister is. The French president apparently took a boat over and just feels like being lazy because why not? And his boat is blown up. Or no, um, the the bridge is blown up that the Japanese prime minister is on. The French president is blown up. The Italian prime minister is with like a mistress on the roof of a cathedral and the cathedral is blown up. Um, 
The Canadian Prime Minister is talking to his wife about how their daughter just failed a driver's test. That's correct. And then the car blows up. And then the car blows up. <laughs> um, and the only ones left are the British Prime Minister and the American President because Gerard Butler pushed up the timetable and didn't tell anyone. Yep. And that's the movie, guys. I mean, pretty much it's stupid as shit. Yep. And the movie is... So I, I think I think for me, like... Well, we missed a couple key plot details that I'm sure we did. Yeah, like so, somehow, somehow they chase the president, they capture the president, try and execute him publicly, and then of course Gerard Butler goes in for the save, and he's the hero, and then they kill the bad guy at the end, as he is either drinking tea or on the toilet. I'm not really sure about that last part. Well, it, you really wanted him to die on the toilet. I really did want him to die on the toilet because I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Well, I can tell you he was drinking tea because there's like sugar cubes that we see three times. I even rewound it because I thought we were trying to just, well, we were not at all interested in most of this movie. We struggle to pay attention at most times during this movie. In the last, I think the last 10 minutes of the movie, I was so bored. I literally was standing rather than sitting in a chair. Well, I mean... (laughs) We we rewatched the last scene like six times because it was so stupid. Uh, the vice president, played by Morgan Freeman, um, is giving a speech. He made, like, a, he made the, a great vice president, though. By the way, oh, he did a good job. But he was like giving a speech on the thirtieth floor of a move of a building, and it's supposed to be in Washington D.C. And it was clearly not Washington D.C. It was it, the stupidest thing. It was absolutely New York City for sure. Oh man! Yeah, like, I, and we were joking because we thought he just got like forlorn from a different film for that day and just ran off to do that one scene and then ran back to the other movie. Yeah, no, this is it's it's really cripplingly stupid. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, the president quotes the Constitution at one point, and that's supposed to be like dramatic. Um. But I, but I think the worst thing about this movie is the fact that it takes itself way too seriously. And so the absolutely unrealistic special effects, unrealistic fight scenes, unrealistic everything, uh, I think people expect them to be more realistic because everything else is so, so serious and dramatic. Um, so to me, this movie kind of failed because it wasn't entertaining at all. Um, <laughs> like whereas whereas Commando, uh, you know, which which we'll do later, or I think we have already done. Uh, it, it it was the opposite. It never took itself seriously. Had great fight scenes and and was completely unrealistic. But nobody cared because it made sense with the entire movie. Yeah. Okay. So we need to play some do like a game with this or something because this is really so stupid. There's nothing to talk about. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> no, I mean like. It, it, <laughs> And at one point, they do the thing that the movie Doom does, which is they switch to first-person shooter mode, and like we're just following a gun barrel down like green screen, and like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's supposed to be it's supposed to be like a kind of like night vision scene, but it's not. It just looks stupid. It looks actually shockingly stupid. Um, it would have been a little better if somehow they started playing Doom music or something. Um, or video game music, or, or if like, I could quote the subtitles, dramatic music increases. Or better yet, like some sort of Nintendo arcade music and had a like a point number underneath or oh, something. Oh, and every time you shoot a terrorist, like a Mario coin goes ding, 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 ding. Yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. Yeah, but, but like the thing is, this movie had like... Okay, so the whole thing is it starts off with the assassination of a terrorist at his daughter's wedding, but it turns out he doesn't die, which we figure out right away because there's a movie that happens. Um, and so this is his revenge where he's supposed to try to kill everyone. Um, there's some stupid shit. Um, they even say like, this is supposed to be the G8, blah, 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 blah. But they only kill six people and (sighs) God, this is dumb. But the, but the worst part is like all these other European countries that should have been invited weren't even there. Like Ireland wasn't there. Scotland wasn't there. All the rest of the country. Um, Well, all the other European countries weren't there either. But I mean, like, yeah. Okay, so we were talking about how, like, (laughs) 
if a terrorist had wanted to kill more people. But like, there, there's just no stakes. Like, it, it becomes kind of like the Breakfast Club. There's like six people we're following around London, but fine, whatever. They all die. The French guy's lazy. Like, they're all little tropes. It's stupid. And then all of a sudden, um, they blow up other landmarks. They should have been like, well, the the rest of the EU, uh, the the Fr- the <coughs> Belgian and the Dutch and the Spanish and the Portuguese prime minister were sitting down in the cathedral. They b- blow up St. Paul's, and apparently there's no one there. Well, no, th- that wasn't the uh, Italian guy there with his mistress on well, top? on the roof. But, like, you have a c- cathedral that's empty for a funeral. The funeral's supposed to start any minute. Shouldn't it be filled with civilians? Oh, yeah, people? yeah, that's true. That, that seemed a little ridiculous. And, like, the thing is, okay, so London eventually shut down. They cut the power. They do all the magical MacGuffins. It's, uh, you pointed this out. It's like Lethal Weapon 4, but the whole city instead of just one area. Yeah, pretty much. Because they cut the power. They blow up city. Like, they set up these war zones. It really looks like you're playing like Halo or something, Call of Duty for a bit. But like, there's no one in the city. Like In the first 10 minutes when like the Canadians blow up, eh, um, there's this moment where you'd think civilians would be running in fear. But there's just people walking in the background. It's like Sharnik. It's really like watching Sharknado when they cut to L.A. and people are just like, ah, kind yeah, of but, blue. But in Sharknado, they did that as kind of more of a, like a like a comedy. Like here, it was like, well, wait a minute, why aren't these people reacting to the scene? It doesn't really make any sense. You mean because it's like a two hundred million dollar movie? Oh yeah, whereas Sharknado, like I, I don't, how much was it, like a one and a half million dollar movie? It went to Cannes Film Festival, Zach. It's an art piece. Oh, sorry. It's an art piece. Yeah, right. No, this is a piece of bullshit. Um, so when you saw this movie described, what were you thinking it was going to actually be? I was I was hoping it was going to be kind of a Schwarzenegger action film, maybe lethal weapon type of movie where there's a lot of action, maybe some mystery where they're trying to figure out who the bad guys were. Yeah. But, e- but even even the mystery of figuring out who the bad guy was was – so obvious that me and Nick basically pointed out it was either this guy or this guy in the first, what is it, like first 20 minutes of the film? Yeah, because there's this uh, very Welsh woman who comes in and goes, it has to be someone on the inside. And (laughs) yeah, of course it's going to be someone on the inside. My God, it has to be blah. All right, fine. All right, so um, we're going to play a game here, Zach. How much do you think this movie cost to make? Uh, $22 million. $22 $22 million. Is that too high? Not even close. I guess I guess 200 and I was way off. It's It cost $60 million to make. How much do you think it made worldwide? I feel like I'm playing prices right right now. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, like... Cl- closest uh, without going over, Zach. Closest without going over. I think over. it made $6 million. Six? Yeah. Yeah, way off. Okay. Worldwide, it made $205 million. So it was a, it was a hit. Wow. They, uh... Okay. I wonder if anyone bothered to watch it in London where it makes them look like absolute shit. <laughs> probably. Yeah. They, 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 probably all the comedians made fun of it and people watched it. Yeah, well, I guess... Tune in. I'll be in Cineprov. Um, I don't know, man. This feels like shit. You want to guess what it made on uh, the Rotten Tomatoes score? Uh, a 12%. 22. <laughs> yeah, I finally got close to something. Oh, man. This was garbage. This like this movie just feels like it's going nowhere. What do you want to talk about on this? Like, I, like, I don't the- even... This is the first movie I've ever seen with Nick where I actually don't have much to say. We had no we had no words. Like 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 honestly, we'd be better off just talking about like sports or you know there was nothing vodka to, or whiskey. The last ten minutes of it, vodka. What was the last time we talked? Like, there's nothing to talk I, about with vodka. It I, doesn't I, taste like anything. Well, wait. A minute. What about whiskey, though? We oh, always we, talk we, about we do talk about whiskey. Yeah, whiskey, bourbon. What were we doing yesterday? Oh, we were watching football, and like you were like, "There's this chart about whiskey." And we were just staring at it for ten minutes. In fact, I was talking to you, and you were just like, like a gape. Your mouth was like wide open. You were like, "Oh, whiskey," and I was just like, "Zach, Zach." You're like, "I think I have to go." I'm like, "To do what? Just look at whiskey?" You're like, "Yeah." I don't remember that, but I do remember looking at that chart and thinking, there's so many bourbons I have not tried yet. I've tried more than I'd like to admit, but I need to try more because my liver still works. Um, also, in case you're curious, uh, the first one, Olympus Has Fallen, is classified as a thriller, 
This one was an action movie. <laughs> that, that, I mean, that really explains all the problem, doesn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't really feel like this movie was much of an action movie. Why does Gerard Butler have to play Americans? He, his American <laughs> accent was awful. It changed in every scene. <laughs> Hello, I am an American. But, I am Scottish. But the but the best the best scene in this movie, which is ridiculous, is the scene where he's talking with an I with an Irishman, and they're trying to out accent each other. Here's a, oh yeah, like the head of the SAS is like an Irish guy or whatever. <laughs> that, that, that's how you know a movie is bad when like you have a scene that shouldn't even be important, and somehow it's the best scene in the entire movie. So this is going to be, by the time this comes out, this might be completely out of date. But, like, so um, Daniel Craig, the current James Bond, is coming back, right? Yeah. And uh, at one point they were talking about um, Tom Hiddleston had come in an audition. Tom Hiddleston is the guy who plays Loki in the Marvel Thor movies and that kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, he's a good-looking guy, but a very different kind of, like, 1960s look to to Daniel Craig, who's, like, this big, bulky, like, <laughs> beefcake of a guy. Um, and there were some rumors that, like, had he not returned, according to one of the producers, that instead of Tom Hiddleston, that Tom Hardy might be the new Bond. And Tom Hardy, for whatever reason, pisses everyone off. He was the guy who played Bane. Um, and essentially, Daniel Craig said, I will return just so you don't hire Tom Hardy. Thank God Tom Hardy didn't make it. I hated him as Bane. Well, I, I just, he, he's okay in some things, but God, he's just apparently pisses off everyone in Hollywood. But it, this reminded me how great Gerard Butler would have been for a James Bond character because he's even Scottish like Sean Connery was. Like, he could have been Sean Connery like Daniel Craig, like, but, but like in a Daniel Craig movie. Like, he's, he's beefy, but he looks good in a suit. He didn't even take off his blazer when the world was fucking on fire in this movie. That's true. But I also think this movie would have been better if suddenly James Bond magically appeared. Like, and just like some... Just some, re- I mean, like this movie was so video game ish. It would have been almost like awesome if like the golden eye version of P- James Bond suddenly appeared. Oh my god! Oh, you mean Pierce Brosnan? Yeah, Pierce Brosnan. Pierce or- Brosnan should have been the the mole. How great would that have been? Oh, that would have been awesome. And then they actually have a shootout. Oh my god! And a little bit of gravitas because the little wormy guy who turns out to be the mole was only in like three scenes and had, but just just him and with his like kind of Irish accent in the background, going like, "I'm not <laughs> sure about this." Well, the thing is, if it was if it was Pierce Brosnan, he could have been like he could have been pissed off about 006. Oh my god! But you're giving me ideas. For a while, they were talking about Idris Elba being like the first like Bond, and everyone was like, "Well, he's a black guy." Well, I think the problem is he's a little old. But if he had been the black guy in charge of Spa- uh, Scott of uh, Scotland Yard in this movie, yeah, and Pierce Brosnan was like the new prime minister, and like that would have also like there's but, so I mean, many... it was like Bond versus Bond, man. That would have been cool as shit. There, there's so like my other issue with this movie is there's so many other directions they could have gone with this movie, and it would have been so much better, and probably sold much better on in in the movie theater and it's like it's like i feel like they shot themselves in the foot with this film well i mean like here's the thing it felt like to me and i could be wrong but it felt like this movie was one that had been written in 10 minutes you know like the first one was written over a long time because like to get a movie made takes forever like you have to pitch a script and you have to write a script and there's revisions and revisions and revisions and i'm sure there are revisions on this but like this is also a sequel. So the first movie probably took forever, and they're, and they're like, these people eat this shit up. Let's make another one. And so this one just feels like there's an angry guy. They killed his family. <laughs> so now they're going to attack London. So the, I guess the third one is, okay, I'm going to give you 50-50. Do you think they're going to make a sequel to London Has Fallen? And I'm looking it up now. I don't know. I... Hope not, but my gut feeling with the way Hollywood is being run is it will happen. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. And... Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm looking it up according to Wikipedia. Uh, casting. There's a sequel. It was announced that a sequel called Angel Has Fallen is in development with Gerard Butler reprising his role as well as once again acting as a producer. And there's a director. Now, in case you don't know, Angel is often the name for Air Force One. So I wonder if they're not going to remake the movie Air Force One with Gerard Butler 
and Aaron Eckhart. Oh God, I hope not. I loved it. I loved the first Air Force One. Yeah, listen to our myopia episode. Um, this movie was weird. I completely agree. I I kind of wish. Okay, so Daniel Craig was even in. Was it in Rogue One? No, it was uh, Episode Seven. He was one of the stormtroopers. Oh yeah, you're right. I th- I think <laughs> we we talked about this. Wouldn't it have been great if he was just one of the, like an MI six agent with like an earpiece in his ear and just he could have get shot in six seconds? But I would just have been like, is that f- James Bond is like an MI six agent trying to protect the prime minister when he gets shot? Like anything? Like you were right. This movie has no sense of humor about itself. Like are like and. They fix it, quote unquote, fix it with bad CGI. It just makes it feel shittier and shittier, right? Well, so honestly, this is one of the few action films where I feel like CGI just ruined the movie. Like, 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 honestly, I would have rather seen like some sort of classic Hollywood explosion, like in Lethal Weapon, uh, or you know, James Bond movies. Like the CGI stuff, you could clearly tell was CGI, and it made it. It made it even more ridiculous because they were trying to make the movie look serious. Uh huh. And it was like, that looks so fake. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I agree. I, I, I just. I, I know I'm breathing heavily into the microphone, but like, it's as, you, just... as you could tell, we clearly hated this movie. We almost did Deep Blue Sea. Maybe we should just go ahead and say we're going to do Deep Blue Sea next uh, time. But... Is, there, is there any way we could just. Oh, is there. <laughs> I told him I'm not going to edit this because I have, I have six other podcasts I deal with. So if he wants that fixed, he's going to have to do it. Is there is there any way we could just run back downstairs and do Deep Blue Sea and just come back over and pretend this never Deepest, happened? Deepest, bluest. My head is like a shark's fin. Deepest, bluest. I mean, I can keep doing it. But... No, no, no. Keep rapping. That was good. We... Shit, Jira Butler starts to save the president. Morgan Freeman is talking from a skyscraper. I got nothing. This is stupid as shit. Oh, man. This movie is bad. <laughs> no, I mean, really, we got nothing to say. I'm glad Gerard Butler is not dead, I guess, but he can't act. But So one other weird thing that I noticed in this movie, I really got to point out, which kind of drove me crazy, is... I'm glad you let that go, because like, I just said something very stupid. Like, go ahead. Like, like, you know, very similar to a video game, like... So the scene where Gerard Butler is rescuing the president, he gets – I think he gets shot twice, and I think he gets stabbed once. But for some reason, after he's done fighting the bad guy, which he doesn't win at that at this point, um, oh. all of a sudden he's running down the hallway like he has no injuries whatsoever. Like he had picked up a health pack and healed. Which it would have been really funny if they showed him picking up a health pack and healing, because that would have at least made the scene make a little bit more sense. This movie just felt sad to me. I, I can't... It didn't win its opening weekend. Like, let's make that clear. It just, it had, like, it lost to Zootopia, and then Deadpool, which had been out for four weeks, was third. Deadpool lasts forever. That's what it, these R-rated movies should be, right? Because Deadpool is funny, Deadpool makes fun of itself. I, to be honest, I actually didn't like Deadpool, but I'm probably one of the only ones who didn't. Um, I didn't like it because I thought it was kind of it, – it reminded me too much of Schindler's List, frankly. Uh, what? They I'm were not tr- going to say anything. They, they, were, they were like clearly torturing people, and I just didn't like that. But this is revenge on the people who tortured him. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. But I also thought they didn't need to show the torture stuff in as much detail as they showed it. Oh, I I will agree that's where the movie slows down to a crawl. Oh, yeah, it does, yeah. I, I do like that he makes fun of his torturers the whole time. Well, that that part's really awesome. I also didn't like the part that, he, like, the movie suddenly turned into some sort of weird, obsessive romance film a little bit because he was completely obsessed about the girl the entire time. Yeah, no, I mean... But yeah, like at least it was the entire time. At least it didn't go in and out. Like there's no if the if he gives up on her, there's no stakes. He but needs th- This is true, but I I almost felt like the movie was following kind of the path of Green Lantern if you think about it, cuz in Green Lantern, like part of the reason he seceded was cuz of the girl. I'm going to stop you there. All superhero movies are the same. 
This is true. <laughs> this is very true. Except Batman, I think. I think Batman's kind of its own. Well, because Batman's a James Bond movie. Uh, at least the Chris Nolan's ones are. Well, yeah, but it's also a lot of detective stuff and a lot of gadget- uh, gadgetry. So, yeah, you're right. It's like a 007. Yeah. Um... I don't know, man. I feel I feel like this movie disappointed us both, but for different reasons. I was disappointed because, well, actually, no, it was soulless. It was it was grim. It was dark, and like, if you're gonna do grim and dark, you have to have interesting characters. We both agreed that the um, Bakawi, the 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 kind of he's generic arab guy who has a lot of money who's like apparently a, a lord of war type who funds every militia in the world with weaponry um and he's kind of the 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 catalyst for all this he's the the guy in charge his son is actually the one in the ground in london etc he's well acted he's an interesting guy we get him for 10 minutes the guy was probably on set for two days so i kind of agree with you like I don't really know why, but um, uh, so to me, you're right. Like, if it's a dark movie, you definitely want characters explained. Like, if you look at a movie like Rogue One, where the characters are dark, the, mo- the movie's very serious, they do a very good job explaining the characters and what they want, what they desire. So when they have the action scenes, it's like, you're you've like put in energy of getting to know these characters. It means something if they die. It's like it's like for this character, it's like but if the president died, okay, that might have been problematic. But if the supposed hero died, I could have cared less. I didn't really yeah. know anything about the guy other than you know he was gonna have a baby. Yeah, and that was like the most important blah blah blah. <laughs> well, but I mean, like again, like to, to quote another Aaron Eckhart movie, uh, The Dark Knight. You knew everything. Like, you knew nothing about the Joker, but he was in the movie a bunch. We barely see these terrorists. We just see the president behind the eight ball. That, yeah. That's not the same kind of drama. There's no drama here. And, like, we'll, we'll talk about how it rates on the Commando scale, but at least with Commando, you know his, that they've taken his daughter, and we check in with the terrorists from time to time. This movie is, at least it's, it's, it's refreshingly short. It's, like, less than 100 minutes. <laughs> It, it also feels th- longer than that, though. It feels like it's a two or three hour movie, like a Lord of the Rings length movie, and there's not a very good plot line either, to be honest. There's not almost any plot line. Yeah, it's literally we have to get the president out of here, and at one point, uh, a woman named Jax, right? Her name is Jacqueline. Yeah, and they she's call her the, Jax. She's a which CIA is, person. Which that- is, no, no, she's MI6. Oh, sorry, she's MI6. British, yeah, which I only call out because. In the terrible Bond movie, this is your Bond expert here, um, Die Another Day with Pierce Brosnan, there's the American played by Halle Berry named Jinx. And what? Okay. she's coming out this fall in the new Kingsman movie as an American agent. So they can all go f*** themselves. Uh, this movie is also violent for no reason. And I know you're like, it's an action movie. Who cares? But you have to make a choice, right? Sometimes these movies are very bloody, and sometimes they're very just one-click, like, headshot, 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 machine gun. Like, that's kind of how Commando is. Like, at one point, he jumps into, like, that courtyard, and, like, he opens up with a machine gun in each – well, I mean, it's literally an automatic rifle in each hand, right? And he just unloads two clips, killing someone with each bullet – yeah, that and then was jumps true. behind and reloads, or you have more violent ones where like there's blood spattering and like it's a war picture, you know, something like Saving Private Ryan, where like they storm the beach and there's just blood everywhere. This movie wanted to do it both ways because sometimes Gerard Butler gets fifty headshots, yeah, and sometimes he stabs a guy six hundred times, and like we hear more stranglings and stabbings than I've ever seen in an action movie. For completely joyless reasons. At one point, the president even goes, was that necessary? And he goes, no. I mean, You're hero, was, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and that was the only time this movie really actually made fun of itself. And the times it did, it was brilliant at it. But it just, it just kind of – it was like a one-hit wonder type of thing. Well, and again, 
like Variety called this terror exploitation because it came out, um, it it started advertising itself um, on the exact tenth anniversary of the terrorist attacks in London, and it like the it. <laughs> Its battle plan was like designed after the November 2015 Paris attacks that came out a year before. And oh, and again, it's this idea that America is <laughs> going to save the day. But remember, Gerard Butler isn't even American. He's Scottish. Like it just all of it feels so like t- not only tone deaf, but like I didn't feel patriotic halfway through. I didn't you know? feel I didn't like as an American who uh, made a great speech about in Ghostbusters, if you uh, heard that one, uh, about patriotism. This movie didn't move me to make another great patriotic speech. So uh, this movie failed on the patriotic spectrum. Now, I said I wasn't going to do any editing because I have too much other work, and you looked at me when I said, do you want to edit this? And you laughed, and I said, well, then fine. I'm not going to edit this. But for the sake of balance, after the credits, guys, I will add his speech from Ghostbusters 2, which is his final credit about how, as someone who came from immigrants like three generations ago, everyone should see this because the Statue of Liberty is at the end. It is the most brilliant and baffling review I've ever seen since A.O. Scott, man. Like, this is phenomenal. Um... You you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, it was it was great, and the entire time I'm giving this a speech, everybody's like staring at me, and by the time I'm done, like, <laughs> and we stopped, everybody's just laughing, and they're like, "Wait a minute, that's what you ended with?" And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> well, I will say one more thing about that. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm gonna leave that alone. All right, Zach, I want you to pitch me a better movie. This is a feature I am adding to Zaction for no reason, because I can do whatever I want. Um, actually, no. This is your movie. What are we doing next? This is your podcast. What are we doing next? You mean as far as movies? No, as far as what happens next in your own podcast. Yeah, so um, honestly, I think we should go back and do the shark movie for the second one, because I think we would have enjoyed it much better and had a lot more to talk about, and it would have been much less random. Well, I was going to ask you what you wanted to have next in this particular episode, but... Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you were asking about next movie. Um, I mean, uh, if honestly, a shark we... showed up in this movie, that would have been pretty great. Yeah, like, on- like honestly, if any other movie just happened to randomly go in this movie, like a Sharknado or something, that would have been great. Like, whatever happened to the new British Prime Minister? I don't know. They never even showed it. Was he the the terrorist? I'm very confused, actually. Well, and the the weird thing is the prime minister that survived. They never even showed him in the movie. So it's like, do they could they not afford him? Like, you know, what happened? Well, and again, it's supposed to be the whole G8. There are other members of the G8. There was only six people that theoretically could die. I, so that like the like the German chancellor gets shot when half of. Uh, God, what are they called? The ones who wear the black fur caps. The 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 the, the palace guards. The oh Buckingham right, palace. right, right. The Buckingham Palace guards shoot shoot the German chancellor. And like another half, like the Japanese prime minister. Like there, like there's some neat deaths, you know, but like there should have been more, man. That like it feels like six people died alone, and like they did the. I also felt like it would have been cool if. We actually see the bad guys plan this stuff out, or like, or oh no, you know what they should have done? They should have done like um like Mission Impossible, where like the first one ninety five, when they cut back and forth between like the plan as it's unfolding. Yeah, that would have been that would have been friggin' awesome. And then and then you show their plan like getting foiled because of this military genius and them getting guy. frustrated. And then Morgan Freeman is like on the other end of that, like as the vice president, acting president trying to figure out where they are and then like the moment when the narrative switches to him figuring out being a step ahead of them instead of a step behind them that's a better movie well yeah or at the point he figures it out and then it's like i mean as i said like i feel like there's the idea behind this movie is great the execution and like the way the plot was done and the filming like it was just so bad there's only a couple scenes in this movie where the film was really memorable like that one shot where that was they were uh filming through the uh busted helicopter window yeah and you can see the president through it 
that was cool. But I mean, like even other things, like we have like. I imagine the national it's supposed to be probably the National Security Council inside this like war room the whole movie, right? The vice president is there, you have <laughs> generic generals that get listed in like 2 seconds. Uh you have president like you have secretary of defense, you have like those people. But there's not there's no point like none of them have any lines. It's there's they should have been like I want to do this. There should have been arguments in there about what to do next, but the second Morgan I mean, I get it. If Morgan Freeman came into the room and said Nick, you should order the potato salad. I'd order the potato salad, but that's not how movies work. Well, so so one uh, one issue that I have with Morgan Freeman in this scene is Morgan Freeman has such a powerful stage presence. It would be very difficult for the generals in there to sit and argue with him. So consequently, they just nod their heads and yeah, but that's not how real politics works. Oh yeah, of course, which is kind of problematic. Also, wait a minute. Also, I think I just realized something. Did you notice they had a five star general in this movie for six seconds? Yeah, like he had five stars on his uniform, which is ridiculous because we've only ever had one five star general. I think it's more than that now, actually. But yeah, oh, we've had three. We had one in World War One, one in World War Two. Um, I'm, I'll, you want me to look them up? Love it. Yeah, that would be great. General Petraeus was one. Um, let's see. We have a bunch. Oh yeah, no. We I think it's I think it's only during wartime we have we have a five star general. Well, no. Once they get the rank, they don't lose the rank. Well, right, but they can only gain it in wartime, right? I mean, I I I, I don't know that, but I, I the president. I mean, yes, the first one was World War One, but uh, was Dewey? Oh no, it was Dewey. We've had a bunch. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, this this matters nothing, but there's nothing to this movie, so whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, there's nothing to this movie. You want me to just list them? I can do it. Uh, sure, I guess. No, we don't have <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I, I feel like... Uh... <laughs> there's so many. Are there really that many five-star generals? Yeah, because so my you... God, my history books for uh, history courses were wrong for everything. Apparently, <laughs> there's at least ten of them, and there's more. No, there's more than that. There's just five, there's just nine from World War Two. So Eisenhower, Marshall MacArthur, Eisenhower, Arnold, Bradley, Hazley, Nimitz, or King and Lee Leahy. Wait a minute. So Patton wasn't a five star. He's only four. No, because he was an asshole and he died. Well, he he what? That's true. But you, you you don't you don't generally get him pos- posthumously. Well, wait a minute. But couldn't he have gotten it during the war? He, I mean, I guess he could have, but he didn't. <laughs> I, I guess being a resurrected Roman general doesn't help with get being a five star. You, you did see the movie, right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh. Oh uh, yeah, but there's only been five in the army. There's been five stars in other departments. You know, guys, this is so boring. <laughs> but the movie was too, so I got nothing to add. So, so this is. The, I mean, at one point they steal the internet's. Like they prevent. Like the whole thing is the president's <laughs> supposed to be shot on live TV, but then they cut the power, and so they like blow up a thing, and so. I don't know. Yeah, but the weirdest thing is they blew up the building the president was in, and somehow they survived, which was ridiculous. Their suits looked great, though. Oh, God. Yeah, their tailor must have been amazing. Eh. Whatever. So, you, what's next? How do we end this episode? Uh, Well, I think we kind of started be- designing a better version of this. But uh, I-, I guess we just should end it telling, you- telling everybody what we think overall of this movie and uh, if anybody should ever watch this and under what circumstances. Go ahead. So you want me to go first? Um, sure, you go. Um, okay, so the movie is an interesting idea. It's boring. Um, it's really, really boring. Gerard Butler is convincing as an action hero, but everything else, like, it's slow. It's nothing. Like, even the idea, like, they don't know who to trust. Oh, my goodness. What happened? Who knows? Like... All the metro, like every Metro PD officer we see, every Bobby we see is apparently turned. 
I would have loved it if there were more like there was more instances of them running into good guys that they just didn't know if they could trust or not, right? Like, but everyone they run into just happens to be a bad guy as well. You know, there's no, there's nothing. And like, frankly, the biggest thing is that, of course, real Bobbies, regular <laughs> like police on the street in Britain don't have sidearms on them. So, of oh, course, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Like, just like Canada, like most of the Mounties aren't armed. So the idea that any of them have guns, of course, makes them the bad guy, which is why you have a movie. But it's just it inherently makes the movie very boring. <laughs> and unfortunately, actors as cool as Aaron Eckhart, who are very charismatic and funny, turn out boring. Right. It, so like the only scene which I'd say is kind of great is the first 15 minutes when the world is falling apart. And then the last 20 when, like, they have the president and they're trying to get out. Like, that's cool. But other than that, it's really, really stupid. Yeah, okay. So for me, this movie only had three parts that were really good. Um, the first part was the presidential rescue. Uh, the second one was the bad guy finally dying, which was awesome. And the third one was the beginning of the movie where you have the bad guy dressed in Italian suits, an Italian suit with his br uh, brother or son also dressed in Italian suit. And <laughs> the every Godfather scene. It, 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 uh, it's kind of a very Godfather scene, and everybody else is dressed in very traditional Indian wedding garb, including the bride and the, gr and the groom. And it was like, that scene was awesome. And then, of course, you know, the director goes ahead and drops a bomb in, on the scene. But, uh... Literally. And uh, so those were the th only good, three good scenes. And those scenes were like 10 minutes of an hour, hour and a half movie. So, you know, I was bored pretty much the rest of the film. And uh, thank God I was watching with this with Nick so we can make fun of it pretty much the entire time. But uh, I, I wouldn't really recommend this to anybody because, you know... <laughs> It's just it's just a painful movie to watch. Um, that's really all I have to say about it. I have two bits of information that you might appreciate. The first is that uh, it was partially filmed in London, but we were right. Morgan Freeman's scenes were filmed in London as well, so he's never in the White House. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. So, so, the, so we were wrong. It wasn't New York then. No, but it was like in like so really nerdy minute, but like. Nothing in Washington, D.C. is allowed to be taught in the Washington Monument for strategic military reasons, of course, and uh, among other things. But when he gives this final address in, like, that's supposed to be from the White House, live from the White House, <laughs> yeah. he's in like the 30th floor of a building. <laughs> and we were making fun of it, but it, like, it literally says, four weeks of shooting took place where Morgan Freeman in London before Christmas. And which is like, of course it does. <coughs> and most of the streets scenes were actually filmed in Bulgaria. So there you go. And the president of Bulgaria shows up as an extra. <laughs> Wait a minute. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> wow. So, okay. And so, Zach, how do we end one of these things? Opa? Opa, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so um, I'm going to guide Zach towards being a better host to this. But um, So tune in in two weeks. These are going to come out every two weeks. And we're going to Zach attack another Zach action movie, man. Um, here's how it's going to work. Uh, if you've attached yourself to this feed um, as his producer, there's going to be two episodes that we've already done uh, as myopia episodes that are attached. At least two, maybe a third. We're talking about it still. Uh, but definitely Commando, possibly Armageddon, and maybe uh, Roadhouse. Or sorry, not Armageddon, uh, Anaconda, and then Roadhouse. You could also attach Cliffhanger if we wanted to. Oh, yeah, you're on Cliffhanger. Well, maybe. Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> if it does, we'll, I'll clean it up and I'll put it there. Um, and then every two weeks, we're going to release an episode um, where you're going to hear a shitty open where Zach and I pick a movie from Netflix or from one of our DVD libraries. And then we watch it and then we cut into this. The final bit of this is going to be um, after we're going to record some episodes up front, but after about, I'm going to say month three, so episode, new episode six or seven, 
we're going to start looking fresh again. So if you have suggestions for us to do for a <laughs> Zaction movie, email them uh, to myopiapodcast at gmail.com or dudeletter at gmail.com or hit me up at Twitter at myopiapod. And I will try to convince Zach that your opinions are better than his, which should not take too much effort because Zach and I will watch whatever shitty movie you float past us. And I really do actually like shitty movies. I just didn't like this one. Well, because this was the wrong kind of shitty, man. We'd rather watch Shark Avalanche 7. Oh, God, that movie was great. I liked it. Did you? Or what was the other one? You, you Like Two-Headed Shark to Puss? No, no, that was that was Daniel's suggestion. The uh, oh, two-headed yeah. shark attack. Oh man! I think. Wait a minute. Did you did you see the three-headed version of it? Of the sequel. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the sequel. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what, man. I, I I like these movies, but like, frankly, I want to do more like Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Jean Claude Van Damme, like just big shitty movies. Love it. Uh, but him and I have been pitching back and forth what actually makes a good Zaction movie. So if you have ideas, let us know. Um, uh, I guess we'll see you in two makes, uh, two weeks when the roids rage and we see another uh, Zaction movie. All right? Uh, <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> all right, buddy. Uh, and we're out. I see you. Myopia Defender Childhood is a member of the ESO Network and produced by Dude Letter Podcasting. It is hosted by Nick Hoffman. It is edited by Nick Hoffman and Candace Burns. The theme song is Caroline by The Serenaders, and their music is available on Amazon. Please rate and review us on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. And tune in next week when we put another little piece of your past on trial. Thanks! This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek, classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at esonetwork.com.